Oops, you caught us. The day after my father's funeral, exhausted in body and mind, I noticed my husband's car outside the house. To my shock, inside the car, my husband and my mother were embracing and kissing. Speechless and rooted to the spot at the unbelievable sight before me, the two of them noticed me. Despite both of them claiming they were too busy to attend my father's funeral. How could you do this? You didn't even come to dad's funeral, I demanded quietly but furiously. Now that your dad has passed, there's no need to hide it anymore. As you can see, we're together, they said without a hint of remorse, laughing. You know I've been a fan of Martha since forever, right? I used you to get close to her, he confessed. It turned out that they had been involved since we got married 17 years ago. With my father's death and my discovery, they no longer bothered to hide it. Steve is so kind. We belong together. So, Kate, please divorce him, my mother said, handing me prepared divorce papers. But I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> really? Do you think I would divorce him so easily? Don't tell me you've forgotten, I said, showing them something my late father had treasured. Both my husband and my mother turned pale and started trembling. I am Kate, 38 years old. Steve and I were colleagues in the same company and got married after an office romance. Steve developed apps for work and, being passionate about his research, released one successful app after another. With the confidence gained from his unique app developments, Steve quit his job and started his own company. Believing in my husband's potential, I joined his company to support him, learning about necessary business expenses and working hard on sales activities. Though we struggled initially, with the support of my parents, our efforts paid off. Our company grew, and we hired more employees and gained more clients. Seventeen years have passed since we got married. My mother, Martha, used to be a local idol and was somewhat famous. Even now, at 60, she continues her showbiz activities, mainly as an advertising model. I learned after our marriage that Steve had been an avid fan of my mother Martha since middle school. Sorry, I was afraid you'd be creeped out if you knew, he admitted after I found a huge collection of my mother's photos and CDs while unpacking during a move. Looking back, Steve was unusually fawning over my mother in the early days. Honestly, I felt conflicted, but I accepted it, thinking it was all in the past. My father was the CEO of a company that manufactured parts. He was a busy man, but he understood my mother's work and handled most of the housework himself to avoid interfering with her career. I remember him making my lunch and helping me with my studies when I was young. He would also drive my mother to her shoots, as she didn't have a driver's license, supporting her acting career despite his busy schedule. My father was a hard-working man, but he fell seriously ill and had to retire, handing over the company to his colleagues. Even after quitting work to recuperate, his condition worsened, and he became bedridden. My father, who now needed care, found no support from my mother. What? Even if you say that. I'm busy with work too. I can't possibly take care of your father, she said. Despite my father's dedication to her, managing the house and driving her around even when busy with work, my mother was cold and ungrateful. While my mother had her work, I felt she could find some time to help. I was honestly dissatisfied with her attitude. As she found excuses to go out, I, despite being busy with Steve's company, had no choice but to take care of my father between my work hours. In such circumstances, my father could no longer drive. My self-centered mother, who only thought of herself, lamented over her difficulty in commuting for work. My husband Steve stepped in. I can drive. My work schedule is flexible, so I can take you to your appointments, he offered. Really? Steve, that would be a great help, my mother said, looking up at him. From then on, Steve willingly took over the role of my father's driver. Steve's company had been successful for the past 10 years, with many competent employees and colleagues. He entrusted work to his employees, rarely going to the office and conducting meetings remotely as the CEO. Thus, he managed to secure time to drive my mother. After my father fell ill and Steve took over as her driver, it became more frequent for both my mother and Steve to be away from home. That day, too, Steve didn't return home, so I called him. You're coming home quite late. What's going on? 
Did something happen? Me? I'm with your mother. She's on a location shoot, and it seemed interesting, so I'm accompanying her as a manager. What? I hadn't heard anything about this. How will your work here get done? I've set things up so work continues even without me. Anyway, we're a bit far from home, so we'll stay over tonight. Sorry about that. It was outrageous that he left the company work to his colleagues and me. I understood being considerate to his MIL, but Steve's actions felt abnormal. He was considerate to my mother but neglectful toward me, his wife. Like any woman, I wanted to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries with my partner. But sadly, Steve always forgot my special days due to his busyness. I'm tired, so please spare me that, he would dismissively say each time. Though he might be busy and tired, couldn't he consider my feelings a little? While he treated me this way, Steve lavishly celebrated his MAL Martha's birthday every year. Happy birthday! You'll always be our idol, Martha, he'd say, renting a restaurant and hosting a grand party with her old fan club. Maybe he wanted to brag to his former fan club about becoming the son-in-law of his idol. But still, his actions toward my mother seemed excessive and strange. I was also concerned about Steve's spending habits. Besides my mother's birthday parties, he often made unnecessary and extravagant expenses. Don't you think our expenses are high this month? Are you keeping track of our finances? I have to. I'm the CEO. There are social obligations and expenses for meetings and entertainment. I can't look shabby as a CEO, can I? Even so, it seems like there are too many parties and expensive items. If the expenses were necessary and well-managed, I wouldn't complain, but they seemed suspicious. The company is profitable, and we're managing. Is there a problem? As Steve grew increasingly irritable about the money, I reluctantly ended the conversation. Fine. Just make sure to pay the necessary bills. Annoying woman, he muttered. The next day, my mother approached me. I heard you had a fight with Steve? Men have their needs, especially as a CEO. You need to understand that and be kind, or you'll lose him. Young CEOs are quite popular, you know? Steve seemed to vent his frustrations and complaints about me to my mother. Martha, Kate says I spend too much. She doesn't understand these necessary expenses. Kate is too rigid. That's why she's so boring. Boring, that's harsh, Martha. But you're right. Kate is capable but too serious and nagging. She doesn't even dress up anymore, like she's given up as a woman. My mother found Steve's complaints amusing, and they seemed to enjoy each other's company. While I appreciated Steve having a good relationship with my mother, I sometimes suspected they were too close. Time passed, and my father, who had been fighting his illness, passed away. My mother was away on a shoot with Steve, as usual. So, I called Steve to inform him of my father's passing. Dad passed away. Can you bring mom back? We need to prepare for the funeral. That might be difficult right now. Why? Dad just died. Can you hand the phone to mom? Hello, Kate? I heard. I'm sorry. This shoot is really important. We can't leave. Please take care of your father's funeral. With that, she hung up the phone. My father had just passed away, and they couldn't come back from the shoot? And Steve too? I was left speechless by my mother's words. I tried calling them several more times, but they didn't answer. Having no other choice, I handled all the arrangements and conducted my father's funeral by myself. Guests at the funeral asked, where is Martha, and where is Steve? I struggled to find answers as I managed the ceremony alone. The day after the exhausting funeral, I noticed Steve's car outside the house. I assumed my mother was with him. Curious about the shoot that was supposedly so important they missed the funeral, I approached the car to confront them. To my shock, I saw Steve and my mother Martha embracing and kissing inside the car. Stunned and speechless, I stood there as they noticed me. Oops, you caught us, my mother said as she and Steve got out of the car. How could you miss dad's funeral for this? How long have you two been involved? 
I demanded quietly but angrily. Now that your father is gone, there's no need to hide it anymore. As you can see, they said, laughing without a hint of remorse. You know I've always been a fan of Martha. I used you to get close to her, Steve confessed. It turned out that they had been involved since we got married 17 years ago. My mother, flattered by the attention of a much younger Steve, who showered her with gifts and praise, had fallen for him. Reflecting on their suspicious behavior over the years, I realized I had been betrayed not only by my husband but also by my mother. My world turned upside down. Now that my father had passed, they were unapologetic about their affair. Leaning on Steve, my mother said, Steve is so kind. We're perfect for each other. I was thrilled when Martha accepted my feelings. She's always been my idol, Steve added. I didn't want to hear such things from my husband and mother. Now that your father is gone, no one can come between us. Kate, please divorce Steve, my mother said. Exactly. Thanks for handling the funeral. I don't need you anymore. Honestly, I can't stand the sight of you. So, leave me and quit the company, Steve added. This is terrible. In short, you're no longer needed. Leave, Steve said, handing me the prepared divorce papers. Furious, I raised my voice. Do you think I can just divorce you like that? Return what you owe first. I showed them the promissory note for the loan Steve took from my father. That's the loan agreement I made with your father when I started my company. Why do you have it? A few years ago, Steve had no capital to start his own business. He borrowed a large sum from my father, the company president. What an amount, my mother exclaimed, shocked by the figure. Steve borrowed this amount and hasn't repaid a cent. My father's company was financially strong, so they managed, but. I had no idea your father's company was that powerful. My mother was attracted to the title of company president but had no interest in my father's business. She took advantage of his kindness, focusing solely on her career and neglecting the company. She underestimated my father's company, assuming it was a small, typical local business because he wore work clothes and drove an old company car. The company building itself is not very large, and since my father is not interested in expensive things, he doesn't care about his appearance. He is the type who goes out to the site himself instead of leaving the work to others, so my mother saw him as working tirelessly. But my father was a serious and highly skilled CEO who handled both management and field work. His products were trusted and recognized nationwide, holding the top market share. His dedication and high-cost investments led to transactions with renowned overseas energy development agencies. I was proud of my father, who was also my mentor in business and sales. Meanwhile, Steve became arrogant with his company's success. He rarely showed up at work, spending extravagantly on parties and buying expensive cars and clothes. Despite all the help he received from my father when starting his company, Steve had never repaid even a single dollar of the loan. But my father, considering Steve as my husband, never strongly demanded repayment, saying, pay it back when the company is doing well. As a result, Steve took advantage of this, not repaying the loan even when his company was thriving, treating the borrowed money as if it were his own. This was why I constantly nagged Steve about his wasteful spending. Steve, if you have money to spend on luxuries and entertainment, shouldn't you repay your debt to my father first? It's too much to borrow such a large amount and not pay back, even if he hasn't demanded it. Why? Did your father say something about the loan? Steve would respond with a carefree attitude every time. But we are family, right? There's no rush to pay it back. It's not like he's struggling. I can repay it anytime I want. He never took the debt seriously and seemed to hope he could just write it off. I later found out that much of his wasteful spending was on trips with my mother, Martha, and expensive gifts and accessories for her. Wanting to impress his longtime idol, he went overboard and my mother, pleased with Steve's lavish gifts, had fallen for his act. But your father, who helped me so much, is gone now. So, my debt is effectively erased, right? Steve said this cheerfully after my father's passing. Hearing this, I was not only appalled by his lack of gratitude but also sighed at his naivety. 
There's no way that's true. While you two were leisurely at a shoot, not even attending the funeral, I inherited my father's debts. With both of them absent from the funeral, I handled all the preparations and paperwork alone. During that process, I took over my father's debts. Even after my father's death, the debt transferred to me, his daughter. I presented this fact along with the loan documents to Steve. Before the divorce, repay this entire amount to me, I demanded. That's quite a sum to repay. Your father wasn't this strict. Steve said, almost in tears. It's only fair to repay what you borrowed. And do you understand what you've done? You betrayed that kind father. I had no intention of forgiving Steve and my mother for betraying both me and my father. I'm not as kind as my father. You will repay every penny. Until then, you have no freedom. Steve recoiled at my sternness and the size of the debt. Seeing this, my mother tried to comfort him. Don't worry. I'll get more work. I've been holding back, but I'll talk to the boss and get back to work like before, she said, as if already his wife, trying to calm him down. I was very successful back then. I sold CDs, merchandise, and had many fans at my concerts. I'll get more jobs and earn plenty, she said confidently. Just then, the president of my mother's talent agency arrived to pay his respects. He had not been informed of my father's passing and arrived a day late. He seemed a bit uncomfortable, having overheard our conversation. It's good timing. I want to work more like I used to. Can you get me more jobs like before, my mother said. But the president replied awkwardly, Martha, your peak was over 30 years ago. Back then, we didn't have to ask, offers came to us. But now, we struggle to get you roles, even for local ads. My mother listened, visibly displeased. Now that you're over 60, the best we can do is get you into ads for women's clothing, he continued. How rude. I'm confident in my speaking skills and can still captivate younger men. Get me roles in travel shows or something similar, she insisted. But weren't you on a location shoot during the funeral? You said it was important, I pointed out, and my mother looked caught off guard. Shoot? We didn't arrange any such job. The best we've managed is getting her into some store ads, the president said. My mother avoided my gaze, looking guilty. It turned out the story about the shoe was a complete lie. Instead of attending my father's funeral, they had gone on a romantic trip together. It seems you want more work, but things aren't like they used to be. People have forgotten about you, and there aren't many roles for someone over 60, the president explained. Even if you held a concert now, no one would come. Your old CDs are still unsold. Honestly, there's no demand for Martha now, he added gently. My mother's hopes of earning through her entertainment career were dashed. But then my mother reconsidered and said to Steve. Steve, you're a brilliant CEO. You'll repay the debt in no time. You've already proven your ability by growing the company this much. You're a man who delivers results. Martha. I'm so happy you believe in me. I'll do my best for you, Steve responded, flattered by my mother's praise. It seemed Steve had resolved to do something reckless. At first, it was painful to see my husband absorbed in his world with my mother, but eventually, my love for him faded, and I felt nothing. Time passed, and as Steve had promised, I was fired from his company. Though it was tough to work with Steve after everything that happened, I felt a sense of relief to leave his company, even if it meant being fired. Three months later, Steve managed to repay my father's loan. See? With my sales skills, this was a piece of cake once I got serious, he boasted. My mother was overjoyed. As expected of you, Steve, you're a genius. You're the talented CEO I believed in. Amazing. She praised Steve wholeheartedly, but I watched with a cold gaze and quietly said. Sorry to interrupt your celebration, but something arrived. Steve, does this look familiar to you? I pulled out a notice from a finance company. Damn. That. Steve tried to snatch the notice in a panic. 
In reality, Steve had secretly taken a substantial loan from a finance company, using our home and his company as collateral, to repay my father's debt. A loan from a finance company? So, you didn't use the profits from your business to repay the debt, but borrowed more money to pay it off? I had no choice, things didn't go as planned. It wasn't supposed to be like this, he admitted. Initially, Steve was confident he could quickly make a profit from sales, so he borrowed money from the finance company. However, when it became widely known that he had fired me, his key sales representative, for his selfish reasons, all our long-standing clients began to withdraw their business. It was my meticulous sales efforts that had ensured the company's success. Steve had worked hard during the company's startup phase, but as the business grew and I secured more work through sales, he left everything to others and barely worked himself. Clients had sensed his arrogance, but I worked hard with the employees to compensate for it, helping the company grow and prosper. With the recent scandal, our clients, who knew I regularly visited them and handled sales, distanced themselves from Steve upon learning he had fired me due to his infidelity. They all said, we can't continue working with a CEO who fires competent people for such ungrateful reasons. To repay me, Steve had borrowed money from a finance company, but with the sudden loss of clients and income, he was at a loss. Upon discovering the truth, my mother became furious. I believed you were a capable CEO, but you're worthless. This is your fault. You demanded trips and luxury bags, so I handed over work and took financial risks, Steve retorted. They began a heated argument. I thought I'd become a CEO's wife by marrying your father and aimed for a younger CEO next, but... She said, looking frustrated. I couldn't stand their pathetic drama any longer. I've taken back what I was owed. I have no more business with you too. Do as you please. Goodbye, I said, gathering my things and leaving them. After that, Steve couldn't repay his loans, resulting in the foreclosure of both his home and company. Left with nowhere to live and no job, he was desperate. My mother, seeing Steve's downfall, didn't offer any help and abandoned him. One day, a disheveled Steve came to see me. It's been a while. Kate, can we start over? You as the sales rep and me as the CEO. We can succeed again with you on board. Despite the terrible things he'd done, he had the nerve to ask for reconciliation. I responded, yes, with me, success is possible. Exactly. You understand. But I don't need you, I said firmly, pushing him out the door. Having lost his CEO position and home due to debt, Steve ended up living under a bridge. My mother tried to focus on her modeling career, but her agency told her, even getting those flyer jobs requires us to beg. Do you realize your prime is long gone? What? I used to have so much work. I can still make it. Isn't it your job to get me gigs, she shouted, causing a scene at the agency. The agency, finding her troublesome, replied, we're sorry, but we can't afford to keep someone who doesn't get jobs and didn't renew her contract. Thus, my mother also lost her job and was left in dire straits. As for me, I was invited back to Steve's former company as an executive, helping it flourish again. Clients who had left returned upon hearing of my return, resuming their business with us. Despite the betrayal I faced from two people, I resolved to move forward with those who truly needed me.